here this morning. Please uh, follow me in the call to worship in the bulletin. Sing a new song to God. Praise with dancing and joy. Rejoice with strings and drums. Please follow me with the opening prayer. Repeat that together. Holy Lord of ancient times, we enter your presence to remember and rejoice. Cover us with your love, that we may put on the protection of your steadfast faithfulness. Guide us with your love, that we may seek reconciliation, true repentance, and genuine forgiveness. Strengthen us with your love, that we may pursue justice. Let us begin our worship. We are singing hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Storms, whatever. 
There's a training program Saturday, November the 15th, 9 to 5, at Hillsborough United Methodist Church. And we'll leave this for you in front. Uh, vital signs. There's coming up the Humber Crop Walk. Uh, last year we had uh, Becky leading that uh, Hunger Crop Walk. It's a five mile walk and it's, uh, it's just a beautiful walk. Uh, Dorothy and I also participated the last few years. We hope to do that again this year. It's the end of the month. And uh, we need sponsors for those who are going to walk. You don't have to walk the whole five miles. Becky did. I was trying to follow her and got lost in her dust. <laughs> um, so uh, this year, if you'd like to participate in the uh, hunger crop walk, uh, there's a form here for signing up for sponsoring or for taking part of that. Okay, now, any other joys and concerns? I have a new great-granddaughter. Okay. My mom's my crazy. That baby girl last week. Ooh, great. Congratulations. Good to hear that. Congratulations. Well done. Awesome. Awesome. <coughs> well, Elvina and I are glad to be home after vacation. <laughs> we went to Campbell United Methodist Church last week, and I want you to know that when the minister introduced to this. He asked me what the name of our minister was, and he said, Blessings to you. Oh, and I've never had that happen when I visited the church before. I thought that was nice. Thank you. And then we took the pop cans back. You guys don't forget to save your pop cans. $12, which is not a lot, but it helps. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> I got three of my grandchildren here today uh, from England. They're going to be working. Maya and Nathan and Marlon. And this is. <laughs> you always have to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have my other four grandchildren here, and we're really happy to have Tia back today. Or 
discredit their needs. Loving God, forgive us. When we do not stop to think how our actions affect others, both good and bad, loving God, forgive us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and lavish us with your grace. Help us to live simple truths, to love each other and do no harm to each other. Eternal God, we just give you thanks and praise for this beautiful day. We thank you for giving us children, those of us who have children, and we thank you for those of us who have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We ask a blessing on each and every one of our children, wherever they may be. Be with them, help them all to be saved, and come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Eternal God, bless each and every one of us here today and use us in your service. Send us from this place knowing that we have been with the Lord. Bless all those who govern us. Lord, we ask that you bless our enemies and that you help them to stop um, doing the bad things that they do to us in Iraq and Iran and the various places in the Middle East. We ask a special blessing for Israel today, Lord, that uh, you would protect her and keep her until Jesus Christ comes back again to land in her. Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we're not going to hear from the, we're not going to hear from the youth choir.
7. Oh God, our help in ages past. Verses 1, 2, and 6. Verses 1, 2, and 6. Oh God, our help in ages past. passages 
Life is all about love. Life is all about love. And on our last day, we may have a question, how well have we loved? Well, in the letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul reminds the church in Rome that love is the true fulfillment of God's law and commandments. And that the love of God within us makes it possible for us to love freely and to love abundantly. Even human reconciliation and forgiveness are possible because God first loves us and comes into our presence when we gather in this place. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. And what's more, I will hear their supplications, I will hear their prayers, and I will answer them. Well, the Apostle Paul is not considered a, a money guru, um, like Susie Orman, or one of the experts on money, but he gives us some very solid advice in this book to the Romans. He says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. Pay to all what is due, due them, taxes, to whom taxes are due. He says, revenue to whom revenue is due. Respect to whom respect is due, and honor to whom honor is due. Now if we were to meet Justice, one of the nine Supreme Court Justices, we would say good morning, Justice, whatever his or her name would be. We give honor to those whom honor is due. And the focus of Paul's intentions is not, an instruction is not so much about paying bills, but it's the one debt that never is satisfied. We can never stop loving others. We all owe the debt of love. Paul had no idea that one day we leave regular people of America would owe over two trillion dollars. Well, you know, we, we have our school fees to pay, we have our uh, mortgages, we have all of these debts, but the debt we owe as we the people exceeds over two trillion dollars. Now the heartbeat of the gospel is that we are loved by an awesome, powerful God. It's, we can summarize the whole gospel by saying, for God so loved the world, that's you and me, that God gave God's love, and God gave God's only begotten Son. And of course, God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, is love. And John says that uh, God is love. Whoever does not love abides in death. Now, why are we going to love others? Why are we going to love our neighbors? Or are we going to live in the dark world of death? God is love. And God does not love us because we are so good. God does not love us because God owes us a favor. God does not love us because we earned God's love. Love is a response from God. God saw us sinners and God just decided to love us in spite of it. Well, God made us. And anything we make, we're so proud of, and God is so proud of us. Especially those of us who come to Jesus Christ by faith. 
especially those of us who gather week after week. And he said, even if two or three of us <coughs> gather in his name, he will be in our midst. So no matter how good we look on the outside, you, know, you see a man looking nice and shaped and well dressed and smelling sweet, and you look at the lady all made up pretty and pretty dresses. We see the outside. God sees the heart. And the, and, and the prophet tells us that our hearts are desperately evil. He says they're devious above all else in Jeremiah 17, 9. So even though we look good, there's something in us that's not all that good. But yet, God loves us. And the only explanation for God's great love for us is that God is love. Now we can love someone, we can love something, but God is love. And God's nature is revealed in love. Paul says, if we love one another, we have fulfilled the law and the prophets. And he learned this from his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who in Matthew 22, 37 through 40 said, Love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our strength, and our soul. He says, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And Paul reminds us that some of those laws that were in the Ten Commandments were with not committing adultery, not murdering, not stealing, not coveting, nor any other sin. Jesus summarized all those Ten Commandments in just to love God and love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you can't murder your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you can't lie against your neighbor. You can't covet what your neighbor has. So love fulfills the law. Love fulfills all of the law. <coughs> Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill them. And Jesus Christ was not a legalist. He did away with the petty little rules and regulations that all the Pharisees and Sadducees had for each other. But even today, there are little petty rules and regulations some people, some ladies can't wear makeup. Some ladies, uh, you know, can't wear short dresses. All of these petty little rules have nothing to do with the love of God. God gave us Christian rules for living our lives. God gave them out of love for us. God was not here as a killjoy. No, I don't want you to do this. God was here giving us rules and regs to help us, to guide us, to make our lives full, to make our lives complete. God has our best interest at heart. God wants us to have other best interest at heart. God knows that if God takes care of us, and blesses us, we in turn will bless others and take care of others. There's a saying which goes like this. To dwell above with those we love, that will be such glory. But to live below with those we know, now that's another story. God wants us to remember and reflect God's love. God so loved us, and it's God so loved me, me being all of us, that God gave the best that God had. 
God gave a bundle of love in Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that God gave God's only and God's best gift of all. And God says, if I'm going to bless you, I want you to turn around and bless someone else. And who's our neighbor? This church knows so well. This church does so well taking care of our neighbors. And I thank you for that. Just a wonderful bunch of folks who take care of each other and take care of our neighbors, not only here, but around the world. When the value of our lives is summed up on that great day of judgment, we will be rewarded not on the basis of the laws that we kept, we will be rewarded on the love that we met, met it out, on the love that we gave out to others. Our lives will be judged on how well we loved. Not only on how well we lived, but how well we loved and we loved others. That is what life is all about. Life is all about love. Life is all about loving. Life is all about sharing and caring. Life is all about love. Amen. Please uh, repeat with me our uh, offering this prayer. Found in the bulletin. Together in Christ, all gifts are welcome for the great and song, covered in love.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our own heart. We have failed to be the obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your will. We have not loved our leaders. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for the joyful obedience. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In his Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in our unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. hear you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave himself up for us he took bread, gave thanks to you broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body that is given for you do it in remembrance of him. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to Luke, on the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we share the broken body of Christ, we believe in Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup, he raised it to his father, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we drink the wine, you may not share in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The gifts of God 
for the people of God. Take, eat, feed on him by faith in your hearts. With thanksgiving. Let us commune together. Savior Jesus Christ wrote them for you, let us commune together. Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. Let us commune together. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you.
give you thanks and praise once again for allowing us as the people of God to be able to gather together. As you said, where two or three gather together in your name, you will grant our request, you will be here in the midst of us. We thank you for being with us, we thank you for sparing our lives, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for being with us all the way and loving us in spite of ourselves. Bless us and send us from this place knowing we've been with the Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
we have gathered together, and God has been with us. We go forth to serve, and God goes before us. Go with the power of God. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious of you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forever and all of God's children say. Amen. Amen. Please remember the crop walk. And if you can't walk, if you can sponsor someone who does walk. We have a sign up sheet here. Chris. One moment, Chris. Roger said last week somebody left their glasses here. They were 